a treat. Um, he is, if, if you go around the city and go to any of the clubs, you'll see him playing uh, all over the city. And uh, we're lucky that he's here tonight. Put your hands together for Mr. Michael Bryan. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I am also, uh, I do stand up, but I'm also during the day, I'm actually a chauffeur, which uh, if you don't know what chauffeur means, uh, it means when I tell women at a bar that I'm a chauffeur, they usually just walk away. <laughs> um, but that's what I do, I'm a, I'm a limo driver, that's what we call it in America. And I always get the same two questions all the time when I tell people in public setting that I'm a chauffeur. Like, miss, what do you think the first question I always get is? What's that? Who do I have I ever driven anyone famous? Yes, John Travolta. And the second question is, has anyone ever tried to sleep with you? Yes, John Travolta. <laughs> Which is crazy that I always get those same two questions. Because the two questions I should be getting are one, where did you drop out of college? <laughs> and two, how disappointed are your parents in you? And the answer to those questions. King State College in Vary. <laughs> I did drive someone famous actually. I drove Jim Lovell. Does anyone know who Jim Lovell is? Astronaut. Astronaut, that's right. If you guys saw Apollo 13, he was Tom Hanks, but the real human being. <laughs> Which is crazy that no one knows who Jim Lovell is. That would be like me asking you if you know who the Beatles are. And you saying no, and then me saying, do you know those guys the Bee Gees played in Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club? <laughs> those guys, but the real ones. And Jim Lovell was here to, to do a motivational speech to speak to people who sit in cubicles all day. What does he tell them? <laughs> like, no matter what you do for the rest of your life, no matter how hard you work, you will never be an astronaut. <laughs> If NASA was hiring right now, they wouldn't even look at your resume. <laughs> so next time you're sitting in your cubicle and your computer breaks down when you're staring at Facebook, think of me up in space in a hunk of metal, using the moon's gravitational pull to put it back in a specific location on Earth so no one dies. <laughs> and then call the IT guy and he'll probably fix it for you. <laughs> and then update your Facebook and say, Jim Lovell motivated me to get back on Facebook. <laughs> They should probably just get Carl from a county who's been there for 35 years and never killed anybody. <laughs> That's a motivational speaker. <laughs> Will spoke earlier about Daytona, and I was the guy who said, I've been to Daytona, and he said, obviously. <laughs> uh, this past Monday, I was actually at a strip club um, before the big Notre Dame-Alabama game, and went to the strip club, and I, I do what Will kind of does. I talk to the strippers just like normal conversations. Like, I always ask, what did you do before you were a stripper? And it's usually like, oh, I'm going to school to be a doctor. This one told me that she was a cement mason for 10 years. <laughs> and that she had to quit because she had back surgery and lost five dicks. Dicks, dicks. She lost, five dicks. She's lost a lot of dicks, so I'm sure. But discs with a C, which I call bullshit on. And then, Near the end of the night, I got a little inebriated, so I said, hey, let's get a lap dance. You seem nice, it's a slow night, I'll throw you some money. And she said, all right, one song, $25. I said, I agree. And we sit down, and it's like the middle of a song, and, but it's techno. So I don't know when the song starts and a new one ends, and whatever, you know? Like, it's just techno, it all sounds the same to me. So she sits down, and she starts doing her thing, and rubbing in my groin area, and it's nice, and then, she, then in the middle of a, like, a, she's like in the middle of a song, she's like, all right, that's it, you owe me $75. It's like, shenanigans? I owe you 25? That's what we agreed on. She's like, well, that was three songs. Like, no, that was techno. I have no idea how many songs that was. And she's like, do I get a manager? I'm like, absolutely. So we go to the manager, and she's like, just give her another $10, and we'll call it even. I was like, fine, so I have to ask my friend for money because I'm broke. And then the stripper yelled at me for not having money at a strip club, and I left with my tail between my legs. <laughs> Went and watched Notre Dame game, woke up the next morning, and my friend started making fun of me for not having money at a strip club. And then he said, and then you got a stain in your pants. And I was like, ha, 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 I didn't jizz in my pants. And then I looked down. And it looked like someone was spray painting, and I just kind of walked through. <laughs> but the spray paint was red. Oh. And it was like, and this, 
Uh, <laughs> I didn't know. I wanted to go back and be like, <laughs> you owe me jeans. <laughs> and like, shouldn't they give him the girl a week off or at least give her like a shoulder rubbing job for that week? <laughs> they should ask, like, there should be some sort of test. <laughs> And these are the actual jeans that I wore that night. <laughs> All right, guys, my name's Michael Bryan. Have a great night. Michael Bryan, no, 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 That's disgusting. <laughs> true story. True story. <laughs> True story, apparently. Mike O'Brien. Mike O'B. We call him Mike O'B. I think. Do we call him that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any names, Fatima?